Hi, I'm Doug Ferrara, co-owner of Real Traps, and this is the control room for my home recording studio. In this video, I'll talk about a common acoustic problem called comb filtering and explain what causes it and how to avoid it. I'll also create some examples of comb filtering so you can hear what it sounds like. Comb filtering is a particular type of frequency response aberration. Unlike an overall boost or cut at one frequency or a range of frequencies, Comb filtering is a series of many peaks and nulls at related intervals. This graph shows the frequency response from a loudspeaker when the listener is 20 inches away from a bare sheetrock wall. The response is called a comb filter because its shape resembles a hair comb. This response is absolutely typical of all small, untreated rooms, and the peaks and nulls span a range of about 20 dB. You would never accept such a horrible frequency response from your CD player or receiver, yet many people are blissfully unaware that the room causes exactly this response. Comb filtering is sometimes used as an electronic effect by recording engineers and musicians. When used intentionally for musical purposes, it's called phasing or flanging. The result is a slightly hollow sound that can liven up an otherwise dull sounding instrument or add a little dimension if the filter frequencies are swept up and down. Here's Realtrap's partner, Ethan Weiner, playing a distorted electric guitar so you can hear what it sounds like with the comb filter turned on and off. Comb filtering is also used by recording engineers to create pseudo stereo from a mono source. If you split a mono music track so the peak frequencies in one channel are counted with nulls in the other, and vice versa, the result is a wide if somewhat artificial sound. Comb filtering is also used by Leslie speaker simulators to mimic the sound of a Hammond organ with a rotating Leslie speaker. This effect also uses comb filtering as a stereo simulator, but the peak and null frequencies are swept continuously up and down to emulate the speaker's motion. While comb filtering may be a cool effect for a screaming electric guitar or electronic organ, audio engineers don't want that added to everything they record. Nor do audiophiles want their room to add that effect to everything played through their loudspeakers. A comb filter can be created electronically using a short time delay. When a musical track is delayed slightly and the delayed version is mixed with the original, the delay creates a phase shift that varies with frequency. At frequencies where the phase shift is 180 degrees, a null in the response occurs. At other frequencies where the shift is 360 degrees, the result is a peak. Other peaks and nulls occur at other multiples of 180 and 360 degrees, so the result is a series of peaks and nulls instead of only one peak and one null. Comb filtering also occurs acoustically when a sound source and its reflections combine in the air and this is our focus here. The difference in arrival time between the direct and reflected sound causes some frequencies to be boosted and others to be reduced. For the examples that follow, I'll use pink noise played through a loudspeaker rather than music. Noise contains a blend of all frequencies and does not keep changing like music does, letting you more easily recognize the unique sound of comb filtering. 
Note that comb filtering occurs acoustically in two different but related circumstances. It occurs when a sound source is near to a reflective boundary and also when a listener or microphone is near a reflective boundary. For this next example, I'll play pink noise through a loudspeaker pointed at a window and vary the microphone distance. This simulates the problem recording engineers encounter when recording in a small room. In a small room, no matter where you place the microphone, it will be near a wall or the ceiling. The same thing happens when the microphone remains stationary and the sound source is close to a reflecting boundary. In both of these cases, sound that reflects off the window glass combines with the same sound coming from the speaker source, and the distance determines the resulting peak and null frequencies. Whether you're a recording engineer who has to capture natural sound that is free of these artifacts, or an audiophile who wants to minimize the coloration caused by comb filtering and room reflections, the solution is exactly the same, absorption. For audio engineers, this improves the naturalness of recordings made in small rooms, and it also improves the accuracy of music played through loudspeakers. In both cases, a severe frequency response aberration is avoided, yielding a clearer, more transparent sound and greatly improved imaging. One final point I'll mention is that comb filtering is pervasive. We are used to hearing it every day. Comb filtering is so entrenched in our sense of hearing that we don't usually notice it. It's also present even in good recordings, for example, due to reflections off the stage floor when recording an orchestra. Comb filtering is also quite common in piano recordings, since the open lid of a grand piano is reflective. Recording engineers often talk about finding the sweet spot to place microphones, but this may be more about finding a place where the comb filtering peaks and nulls happen to fall on musically pleasing frequencies. Thanks very much for watching.